The Berkeley Pit is the, uh, one of the earliest open pit mines. They ceased mining it in the 1980s, and when they ceased mining it, they shut off the pumps that pumped the water that was pouring into the pit. When you shut the pump off, a million and a half gallons a day of water, groundwater, rushes into this pit. The significance of the pit is that if you dig a pit, you know, what do you get for it? Well, what you, one of the things that you get is a skyscraper. Think of skyscrapers as inverted pits, as pit mines. And so as the more skyscrapers we build, the more pits we have to dig. And these pits, of course, are, are dis environmental disasters. There's no such thing as a good pit. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's like a cancer, or it's worse than a cancer, because uh, in a way you dig it out and you can't even refill it. Uh, or if you can refill it, it's dead matter. These days we hear a lot about climate change. Melting ice caps and vanishing glaciers, rising seas and raging storms, prolonged drought, mega fires, mass extinctions, along with millions of people forced from their homes and turned into refugees. Scientists say the cause is extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Most of that extra carbon dioxide comes from burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. In other words, we're doing this to ourselves. And we're doing it on an ever larger scale with ever increasing violence. We're mining and drilling everywhere, from sea floors to mountaintops to deep within the earth, bringing ever more destructive technologies to bear on the most remote and sensitive regions of the planet. But fossil fuels aren't the only natural resources we extract at an alarming rate. We binge on a range of raw materials, also with devastating consequences. As much as anything else, we live in an age of extraction, a time of sacrifice zones, a time of ravaged landscapes, poisoned waterways, impoverished human communities. What can be done to stop our reckless exploitation of natural resources and therefore the destruction of the natural world itself? We believe the first step is sounding an alarm, breaking through the noise of modern media to make the gravity of our dilemma crystal clear. And who better to do that than artists? Artists find possibility in everything, no matter how broken or abused. About a year ago, I was visiting the Dia Beacon Art Museum with some friends and uh, lo found myself looking at the uh, table that had all the, the hot books, the face-up high real estate books in, in the big New York art world, and I saw a very unassuming small volume called Black Diamond Dust. And uh, it was the native artist, local artist and poet's response you know, to the extractive industry of coal mining and its destructive influence on the community and how the community thrived and then died and now it's struggling to come back. And I thought to myself, this is the story of my life. This is the story of Butte, Montana, which was 120 miles upstream from where I was born in Missoula, Montana. Where there's art, there's hope. That's why we're developing extraction, art on the edge of the abyss a multimedia, multi-venue, cross-border art intervention. I just decided right then and there that I would call the two art museums that flanked a place called the Berkeley Pit, or, or the, uh, which is the largest Superfund site in America in its beginnings, and still is in a, a, one of the greatest disaster area, mining disasters in, in the world because of the uniqueness of the pit and the, and the acid waste that is uh, accumulating in it. So I called the two museums uh, on the same day, and the curator of one museum, the Holter Museum in Helena, said, yes, I'm in. The director of the Missoula Art Museum said, yes, I'm in. And I thought, well, that's it. Bob's your uncle. I've done it. Extraction art will take place in multiple locations throughout the U.S. and abroad during the summer of 2021. It will expose the negative social and environmental consequences 
including the damage done to people, especially indigenous and disenfranchised communities. Nothing like extraction art has ever been attempted before. All art forms all happening at the same time, with hundreds and hundreds of artists spread across several continents, all addressing a single theme, the suicidal consumption of the planet's natural resources. This is the most pressing environmental issue of our time, encompassing all others, including climate change. During a time of growing despair and paralysis, people from all backgrounds and levels of experience, from the amateur to the virtuoso, can take action. We have nearly 30 museums. We have hundreds of artists and photographers and dancers and musicians and playwrights and poets and uh, essayists on board. I mean, just about everybody I talk to says, yeah, this is a great idea. But extraction art is not only for artists. We can't succeed without the support of people who appreciate the power of art to alter perception, awaken the spirit, and inspire action. For our purposes here, it means donating to help us build a communication network for our far-flung artists and art venues. Everyone affected by extractive industry, which is everyone watching this video, has a role to play in extraction art. We invite all of you to join us in raising an international art ruckus on behalf of the Earth, our only home, to join us in saying enough.